that are now in all the Caucasus and are in Ukraine and are in Syria, their only Mediterranean port, attacking them. And so the Russians are defending their absolute core national security. And so the reason everyone's being driven into the former KGB agent's arms is because Obama and the globalists in an educated, politically informed world, America has the least amount of travel except for like North Korea outside the country. America has the lowest level of uh, information about geopolitics. America is just completely illiterate when it comes to these geopolitical developments. <laughs> and so China is incredibly corrupt and bad. I don't like the communist. Russia's got big problems, but Russia's tried to reform compared to China, and the globalists don't want that. They don't want any sovereign nations. They don't want any sovereign sectors. They don't want any sovereign places to run. And so Russia's trying to have their own currency. They're trying to team up with India and China. Russia's trying to defend itself. Russia's trying to build a culture. Russia's promoting the family. Russia is, is going after pedophiles. Russia doesn't put fluoride in their water. You turn on Russian news, GMO shows to be a system put in to reduce fertility. Here's the UN documents. Fluoride has been proven to lower IQ and destroy fertility. That's why the West puts it in their water as part of population control. Here at the Russian Ministry of the Interior, we do not wish to destroy your fertility, but through cultural means of the communists, we have had our fertility lowered. We must have children or we will fall. This is part of a larger plan to, uh, I mean, the Russians know, folks, because they've been through 85 years of New World Order gang rape. And isn't it fitting as world government arises and as almost every country's fallen, Russia is over there, infiltrated, corrupt, double dealing, has its own problems, but ideologically is being defiant to this. First clip is Obama, in case you think I'm making it up, talking about apocalyptic ISIS, which is a sock puppet, a hand puppet, a finger puppet, a marionette, a avatar, a front of Saudi Arabia, NATO, the globalists, the criminals that run our country. The criminals that run our country harvest babies while they're alive. They run Al-Qaeda. They're trying to ban Christian speech and ban churches and ban crosses. They're already doing it in Germany. They're already doing it in Sweden. They're coming. It's communist with mega banks financing them, with radical Muslims taking over. We are under attack, period. Period. Now let's go to Obama warning of the apocalypse of jihad, and out of this crisis, they will bring in their world government. Here it is. When a dictator slaughters tens of thousands of his own people, that is not just a matter of one nation's internal affairs. It breeds human suffering on an order of magnitude that affects us all. Likewise, when a terrorist group beheads captives, slaughters the innocent, and enslaves women, Oh, he's all behind all of it's it. It's not a single nation's national security problem. That is an assault on all our humanity. Total evil, totally behind it, and then acts like he's against it. That's Emperor Palpatine level. I've said before, and I will repeat, there is no room for accommodating an apocalyptic cult like ISIS. And the United States makes no apology for using our military as part <laughs> of a broad coalition to go after them. <laughs> oh, I can't listen we to this. We do so with a determination to ensure that there will never be a safe haven for terrorists who carry out these crimes. Of course, they're creating a safe haven out and of part of Iraq. We have demonstrated over more than a decade of relentless pursuit and of Al-Qaeda. out of Syria. We will not be outlasted by extremists. Oh, no. They're just totally empowering them 14 years after 9-11. You know, let's go to Putin first and then Obama when we come back. Here's part of Putin's address to the U.N. yesterday. And then compare it to what Obama's saying. The Russians have invited the U.S. in to take these people out. They're not going to take out their own people. And again, this is all coming out in the news. The world knows we run Al-Qaeda, and the world's meant to learn that because down the road, America is going to be crippled. America is being set up for a major fall, not a complete fall, but a game changer. Europe is to lead the world government. America is to supply Hessian mercenaries. The new Atlantis is to be brought down. Let's go ahead and go to Russian President Vladimir Putin. It seems, however, that far from learning from others' mistakes, everyone just keeps repeating them. 
And so the export of revolutions, this time of so-called democratic ones, continues. It will suffice to look at the situation in the Middle East and North Africa, as has been mentioned by my previous speaker. Certainly, political and social problems in this region have been piling up for a long time. And people there wished for changes naturally. But how did it actually turn out? Rather than bringing about reforms, an aggressive foreign interference has resulted in a brazen destruction of national institutions and the lifestyle itself. Instead of the triumph of democracy and progress, we got violence, poverty and so social disaster. And nobody cares a bit about human rights including the right to life. I cannot help asking those who have caused this situation, do you realize now what you've done? But I'm afraid no one is going to answer that. Indeed, policies based on self-conceit and belief in one's exceptionality and impunity have never been abandoned. It is now obvious that the power vacuum created in some countries of the Middle East and North Africa led to the emergence of anarchy areas, which immediately started to be filled with extremists and terrorists. In these circumstances, it is hypocritical and irresponsible to make loud declarations about the threat of international terrorism while turning a blind eye to the channels of financing and supporting terrorists, including the process of drug trafficking and illicit trade in oil and arms. It would be equally irresponsible to try to manipulate extremist groups and place them at one's service in order to achieve one's own political goals in the hope of later dealing with them or in other words, liquidating them. Russia has always been consistently fighting against terrorism in all its forms. Today, we provide military and technical assistance both to Iraq and Syria and many other countries of the region who are fighting terrorist groups. We think it is an enormous mistake to refuse to cooperate with the Syrian government and its armed forces who are violently fighting terrorism face to face. We should finally acknowledge that no one but President Assad's armed forces and Kurds militia are truly fighting the Islamic State and other terrorist organizations in Syria. We know about all the problems and contradictions in the region, but which were based on the reality. Dear colleagues, I must note that such an honest and frank approach of Russia has been recently used as a pretext to accuse it of its growing ambitions, as if those who say it have no ambition at all. However, it's not about Russia's ambitions, dear colleagues, but about the recognition of the fact that we can no longer tolerate the current state of affairs in the world. What we actually propose is to be guided by common values and common interests rather than ambitions. And that's the key. And that's why Putin is now the main leader of the world. Because compared to our leaders, Putin is moral. And Putin tells the truth over and over again. And the whole world sees that and sees that our government wants to overthrow even friends. Our government is overthrowing people in Egypt, people in Libya, but also in Eastern Europe, you name it. Because wicked corporations now run our government and they want to discredit America as well. They want to destroy all the nation states, so they're willing to use us as a battering ram, even though it's going to break us in the end. They're using our wealth, our goodwill, our strong name to build this world government. Russia is completely backed into a corner. The United States is moving new medium-range cruise missiles into Europe, admitting they're going to prepare to nuke Russia. And so Russia is now being pushed closer to China, and they're moving into the Middle East. This is biblical, and it's being directed by the EU, by the globalist, and we're not hearing a word from the Pope about this. We're only hearing how we need to cut the third world's carbon output, which is a death sentence. We've got a crew member who, I guess, immigrated here when she was young from Russia. We're going to interview her soon, and she was just telling us during the break, she's going to do a piece tonight that will air tomorrow, 
where she's going to, in the actual Russian, tell you what Putin said. And I've seen this in the Russian news as well. Their transcripts are different than ours. Putin said at the UN, your government's behind al-Qaeda and ISIS, and how dare you do this, and we're going to fight it, and, you know, you're really corrupt. And by the time it's on U.S. news, it's been watered down. This is the level of deception they're putting everybody under. So it goes from light stuff like the Martian being released uh, right as NASA announces um, their big Mars mission. Uh, I mean, of course that's going on. That's propaganda, but it's white propaganda. It's pro-human, pro-exploration propaganda, but still they should admit they did it on purpose, just out of respect for the public. Then you've got deceptive stuff like the Pope and the little girl, and then you've got really deceptive stuff where Zuckerberg comes out and tries to stop people from exposing what's going on and then admits it at the UN, talking to the German chancellor. And then the deception gets even worse where they take what Vladimir Putin says and twist it. 